Hello, everyone, and welcome to Life Hacks for Working Moms, the podcast that helps you overcome the overwhelm, embrace the chaos, and cultivate a life you love. My name is Megan Strand, and I am so happy to be with you today. Thanks so much for tuning in. And thanks to those of you who have connected with me recently on Twitter or the Life Hacks Facebook page. It absolutely makes my day to hear from you, so keep those connections coming. We've kicked off this year by talking about you and the things that are important to help keep you sane and healthy. And today we're going to discuss something that so many of us want to experience, and that's how to increase our energy levels in a way that supports our overall health instead of taking away from it. Years ago, after I had my first child, I really struggled with low energy levels and fatigue for the first time in my life. And I remember searching online and finding almost nothing useful online with one shining exception. And that was a website called Women to Women, who actually seemed to understand what I was struggling with and provided some really useful solutions that worked for me. Today, I'm honored to be joined by the founder of Women to Women, Marcel Pick. Welcome, Marcel. Oh, thanks so much. I'm glad to be here. Can you just give us the backstory on Women to Women? Why did you feel the need to start this company so many years ago? Sure. Well, um, we started it before anybody was actually talking about integrative medicine or functional medicine, which is what I practice. And what we found is that we really needed to have women hear some of the truths about their health, but more importantly, we wanted to teach women um, a way for them to become their own inner guides. So often we're telling people what to do and we're not encouraging women to pay attention to their own knowing inside. Women oftentimes will come to me and say, look, Marcel, I think this is going on or maybe this or can you help me with this? And in medicine, we always poo-poo that and we wanted to have a practice that listened to women, that looked at what the actual cause of the problem was instead of actually treating the symptoms. And we did that many years ago before anybody was even conceiving of this idea. So it was really, we were all compelled to do it in a different way. Well, and thank goodness you did. I mean, so many, I think, you know, with traditional medicine, it's like, unless you're bleeding from the eyeballs, people are like, yeah, you're fine. You know, you're really fine. And you're like, no, I'm not fine. I don't feel good. What is going on? But unless, you know, unless it's something, you know, clinical that shows up on a blood test, forget it. Well, you see, that's part of the problem, and that is that, you know, we, in, in, particularly in America, are amazing at acute medicine. You know, if I have a heart attack, bring me to the emergency room. Sorry, Absolutely. Yeah, or a stroke. But when we come to chronic issues, we're really not doing a good job, and the primary problem is that we're not looking at the actual issues that are creating the problem. And, you know, if somebody is fatigued, well, we're going to look at their CDC and make sure that they're not anemic. We're going to make sure their thyroid is functioning properly, make sure they don't have any underlying cancers or something. And then if they're tired, we just say, look, you've got two kids, you've got three kids, you're getting older, it's just part of the deal. Deal with it. It's not true. (laughs) It's not true. It's not true. I mean, it can be so many different things from food sensitivities to adrenals to a thyroid that may not have enough selenium or iodine. So it's really understanding anatomy and physiology well enough that we start to listen to the patient. We look at what the story is, what all the symptoms that are going on, and what are all the organ systems that may be involved that may also be in trouble. Absolutely. It's a very different approach to wellness and health. So uh, let's talk a little bit about just what some of the common reasons are, because, you know, people, women listening to this podcast are extremely busy. They work outside the home, most likely they have kids. They're probably doing 17 other things. What are some of the most common reasons people come to you? And let's just put aside, let's assume there's nothing clinically wrong with them. They're not anemic. They don't have cancer. Let's just talk about more general, lower level fatigue and and low energy. Um, Fatigue can can also come from thyroid. So if thyroid's not a piece to the puzzle, let's put that out of the equation. But you can have food sensitivities. You could actually have gluten problems. And gluten, if you're eating it and you're having a reaction to it, can be incredible at what it does to your energy levels. And if I even have someone with a thyroid disorder, it's the first thing I'll take out of their diet is, is, is gluten because it really does affect thyroid function. In addition, you may have an almond sensitivity, believe it or not, or you may really? be reacting to eggs. Yeah, I see it every day in my practice. Eggs, almonds, dairy, gluten, and soy are the big ones, and peanuts, too, are the big ones, no question. 
So I will take those out of people's diets, and, and I'm looking to see do they have food sensitivities. And there's something called an IgG reaction, which is a sensitivity, or an IgE reaction, which is more of an allergic type response. And even people don't have hives, but as soon as I take those foods out of their diet, it's unbelievable what it does to their uh, to their energy, and then they can sleep a little bit better. But of course, one of the things that I see often is adrenal dysfunction, and I see so often people were all doing it. You know, I had a one year old, and then I had twins, and I was working full time, and I was on call, and I was involved with the kids, and a major. I mean, it was like, oh my God, woman, what are you doing? <laughs> And it does affect our adrenals because we're the adrenal glands are meant to deal with with fight or flight. They're meant to deal with chaos that goes away. <laughs> but so many of us are living in the chaotic way of doing our lives, including we're on the iPhones, iPads, TVs are on all the time, and we're our poor nervous system is just really having a hard time. So when I look at adrenal function, I use nutrients and lifestyle changes to really help with that and dietary changes because food sensitivities can be a piece to that equation as well. So all those things together make the world a difference in turning things around. But as a culture, Megan, as a culture, we don't even acknowledge that our adrenals are a problem. Right. Well, I think it's, there's, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've done a fair bit of reading on on this type of thing, and I still do not understand how the adrenal glands work because it's it's there's a very complicated system, and it, very several interconnected systems within our bodies between our hormones and our adrenals and our digestion right. and all. I mean, it's very it's pretty complicated. So it's not something right. that typically one blog post can address, and you're like, oh yeah, I get it. I no mean, way. I think we no understand. No. You know, when people say you're overtired and you're overtaxed, that you're you're taxing your adrenals, but you know, what does that mean? And how do I correct it and all that good stuff? And I, you know, well, one you thing I, I want to, one thing I want to kind of just ask you is I think the common crutches that people go to are things like caffeine and sugar and maybe alcohol. So, you know, the caffeine and the sugar are like when we feel terrible and we need a boost. So we do that. And the alcohol is like when we feel stressed, we tend to do that to kind of decompress. So t- just talk a little bit about how you deal with clients when it comes to these substances that we're sort of leaning on as crutches, but are probably not so sure. great for us. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because, um, and again, it's going to be hard to kind of explain it to people in a very short period of time. But when you have a fair amount of stress, you're going to do anything you can to get your energy level up. And interestingly enough, when we have stress, oftentimes it's a contributing factor. We have low serotonin level and serotonin is produced in the gut. If your gut's not happy, you have food reactions or you have a digestive disorder, which about 80% of women do. They have bloating or gas. Hmm. What happens then is serotonin is not produced properly. You then are going to crave sugar because sugar increases serotonin temporarily. And then you crash on the other side. Or you're going to use caffeine because you just can't get up in the morning because the adrenal cortisol is too low. So what I urge people to do, and alcohol is obviously something that we do to decrease our stress at night. It works really well, but it increases the or it decreases the ability to have REM sleep. For every ounce of alcohol you have, you decrease REM sleep by an hour, and REM sleep's crucial for us to feel well and rested. And then people start to gain weight. But basically, the adrenals, when they are overtaxed, and you have either really low cortisol or very high cortisol or you have a mixture of low and high, what happens is that the adrenals then are inherently important in terms of normalizing hormones. So when the adrenals are off, hormones become imbalanced, and also the blood sugar becomes dysregulated, and your immune system is affected, and your thyroid is affected. So truly, truly, we know biochemically now that the stress we have in our lives affects us biochemically. And if we have too much of it and we push too hard and have too much sugar or caffeine or alcohol, it affects the immune system and it affects the adrenals and the hormones and everything intimately. Now, the beautiful thing is just by changing one's diet to stop sugar and maybe have a cup of caffeine a day in the morning and decreasing alcohol to one glass of wine a night or not even that, and then decreasing carbohydrates and having whole foods and no artificial colors, sweeteners, dyes. It's unbelievable what I see in my practice for what, how people feel differently. 
I'm sure. And then I'm I sure. might use nutrients to help with the adrenals as well. Right. I want to. I want to back up just a minute though, because sure. what you just said, I definitely agree with. I've experimented with cutting out caffeine and sugar and gluten and all sorts of things. And you're right. You feel amazing. But a, not everybody's like me who wants to do all of that at once. And B, it's hard to sustain that, especially when you're on the go all the time. I mean, it's, it's sort, I feel like it's sort of like a house of cards. So if I'm on my game and I've planned out my family's dinners for the week and I know what I'm eating for lunch every day and I have a standard breakfast, like I do okay. But the second one of those things tips, then the whole thing comes falling down and I'm like, oh, forget it. You know, let's go back to caffeine. It's way easier. So what do you, I mean, what are starting places for people to kind of experiment with? Um, assuming you know that the starting place would be no sugar I mean yeah. sugar is you know what's so interesting about sugar is now in the research and we've actually known this for a number of years is that sugar turns on the same receptors as cocaine and heroin I mean I I have a if you go to Huffington Post I have blogs on there in regards to that and I tend to kind of post on there you know every two weeks or once a month and the research is really compelling that there are some people in the population that it is like a drug. That would be me. And they have a really hard time getting off of it. So for some people, it's just there is no white. There are no whites in the diet. There are no. It's no sugar. And as hard as that is, if we have children, our children watch what we do, right. not what we say. So if they're watching us grab things on the run or we're not taking care of ourselves, the bad part to that is that's what we're teaching them right. is to not have good self care. Right. No, that's a, that's so an excellent point. So there's ways to play with it, though. I mean, you have a smoothie for breakfast, and you make your kids a smoothie, or, or you make it fun, or, you know, you kind of have a compromise of things. But I really urge people, especially with children, not to compromise around the sugar um, and really to keep the carbs down. If you're going to have carbs, that they're really good quality carbs. Right. With, so with and the you sugar... And things oh, packed yes. for yourself. So right. Like well, you have nuts and you always have them in the car, or you have you know, different things. Right. And when that, I travel, I take food with me. Yeah. And I think that's a big piece of it is just being prepared and being ready. But again, you know, sometimes if everything's lining up, right, it's easier to do that than I other know. times. Um, how, what's your take on, cause I've definitely, I've actually worked with a functional nutritionist in the past and her take is, you know, absolutely no processed sugars, but if, you know, certain sweeteners are okay in limited proportions like honey or maple syrup, um, stevia is another one. What's your take on those alternative sweeteners? Stevia is fabulous. You know, and again, um, I think that the piece that's really important to know is it depends on your sensitivity and right. it gets seductive. So we have a little honey in our, our tea and then we have a little honey on our toast and we have a little honey here. And we have it yeah. in our yogurt. Yeah. It's like, you know, honey, sugar, however you cut the mustard. Exactly. And if you can be disciplined enough to not have it, it's better. I mean, my kids didn't know what sugar was until they were six and we went to a restaurant. And my son, I have twins, he, he stuck his finger in the in the bowl and I was like, my God, my God. <laughs> and I'm like, Mommy, what is this? What have like, you been depriving oh, me of? Busted. Oh, that's awesome. If you have not seen the documentary Fed Up, I'm talking to our listeners now, it is a phenomenal documentary that sort of talks about that whole sugar problem in our society. And it gets to that point about the addiction and the, how your brain responds to sugar like it, it would cocaine. And it's fascinating. And I, I will admit, I honestly and truly think that I'm one of those people that has that addictive sugar piece. And it's, mm-hmm. it's right. It's, you're right. I mean, even just, it's like a gateway drug, even like a little bit of honey. I'm like, oh, you know, where's the candy bar? And right. I'm the sort of person that can't eat one piece of licorice, I have to eat the whole package, which is, it's horrible. So it's easier for me to just cut it out completely. But here's my question for you. So let's say you're trying to do a better job cleaning up your diet. You're reducing or eliminating sugar. You're reducing or eliminating caffeine and or alcohol, whatever variety. And you get into that place where you're like, oh, I just need something. Like it's a, you're just low energy for some reason. Maybe you didn't sleep well the night before. What are your, what are some strategies that you give to people to say, okay, here's your list of five other things you could do or turn to instead of a cup of coffee or a latte. You know what I do a lot of times is I have people get protein bars. There's some amazing protein bars. In fact, we're just in the process of developing some ourselves. Oh, awesome. That don't have sugar in them, that don't have gluten in them, that don't have corn or soy, and they're pretty yummy. In fact, I'm going to a, a mind share tomorrow. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about even developing some other ones in Florida. So there are, you have to know where to look. 
But there are, there's a company called Designs for Health, and they have amazing bars that are made with xylitol. Okay. I don't like that they don't have enough protein in them for me, so I'm in the process now. So kind of stay tuned, and probably in the next couple of months, I'll have them on my website, womentowomen.com, that have higher amounts of protein. Because what happens is, if we go too long without food, our blood sugar drops, and we will kill for anything to eat, including right. kind of carbohydrates. We will die for carbohydrates. We'll push somebody out of the way. It's like <laughs> you're between me and what I need. But if you plan around that and make sure that you don't go that long, um, and you see it in your kids. I mean, the kids sometimes it's like they hit a wall, and it just kind of happened overnight. Oh, yeah. and their blood sugars. My daughter was like that all the time. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, my God, what happened to her? So it's being prepared, and that's a drag because you always have to be thinking ahead. And when you have children, you have to do that anyway because you need snacks for them because they just kind of need to have that stuff right. throughout the day. So it's so, doing the same for yourself. So just having an alternative like, something to I put into your mouth it when in you need it. your purse or, or wherever just in case, you know, and I know this sounds amazingly ridiculous, but even beef jerky or turkey jerky from the health food store, I had it in my purse all the time when my kids were little just in case. And what about protein? What about nuts? Is that a, is that a good go to snack? That's fine. It's wonderful, but don't put in the dates and the right you know, the, <laughs> the dried the, fruits. Yeah, the raisins and the yeah the cranberries because they're high in That's sugar. another gateway but drug. Those are great. Those are great options. Yeah. Okay. So being prepared with other snacks. Anything else? Like yesterday. So yesterday was just. I was in that kind of mid afternoon thing and I wasn't even necessarily hungry, but I really just was like, all right, I'm, and I work outside of my home or from home. So it's very easy for me to be like, huh, what do I have in the pantry? And instead, my kids just got a new trampoline for Christmas. And I was like, I'm going to go jump on the trampoline. And it was awesome. And it totally gave oh me God, a head that's rush. So wonderful. And it was awesome. Absolutely. So, are there other things yep. that you tell people to do? Like, sometimes you're not even hungry. You're just kind of like bored or just, I don't know. You know, if you live, I, I live in very cold weather, so going outside right now without shoes is not a good idea. Not a good idea. You know, I think it was eight below this morning. But, oh, geez. Um, it's, it's finding ways. To, well, here's the thing that I would do. I'd make a list of the things that you love to do and have them on your refrigerator or have them in your purse so that you can be reminded of what is it that I like, what is it I want. And you have to think about it for a little while. What right. makes me happy? Is it exercise? Is it this? Is it yoga? Is it deep breathing for five minutes? Is it just doing a five-minute meditation? Because moms, we don't have 20 minutes. No. Sorry, we just don't sometimes. But five minutes, put your, you know, if you have an um, iPhone, put your phone on for five minutes and just go into that quiet place. Trampoline is fantastic. Treadmill for five minutes is really good. Anything like that that will really increase kind of your, your energy is a fantastic thing to do if you're really not hungry. Making sure you drink plenty of water because that can make you tired as right. well if you don't have enough water. And also nutrients. Unfortunately, if you're nutrient deficient, especially vitamin D, you can also have fatigue as well. So it's looking at all those things. Magnesium is depleted when we have a lot of stress. The B vitamins are depleted when we have stress. So making sure that you have those and you take those on a regular basis. Fish oil, really, really crucial if you don't have enough fish oil in your diet. So just making sure that the foundation of that is there and then on top of that, adding other things um, would be really, really helpful, like the list that I suggested, the five things that work for you. Yeah, I love that idea. So talk a little bit about it. I know Women to Women actually offers a, a women's supplement. So talk about some of the things that you were just referring to that you feel like make a big difference. Because, I mean, part of this is there are some people that are going to go out and they're going to get all sorts of fantastic tests done, things that I know that you probably do in your practice. And there's some people who are just like, I'm freaking tired and I don't have the money or the time I to know. go do this. So what, I like know. talk about some things that we could probably all use yeah. um, that are accessible. Well, what, what I do basically online is I really think it's really important for people to understand that we're kind of programmatically we have things that are wrong with us. For example, there are people that have adrenal issues, and I break it down into those people that are wired and tired, those people that are tired, and those people that are just hyper. Because we're going to use different nutrients to really help the adrenals be adaptogenic in that way. Um, a good quality multivitamin that has adequate amounts of vitamin A. And I also, in my folic acid, I like to put something called, um, it's a fancy word, 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. But about 30% of the population has a genetic issue, a SNP we call that, that they can't convert it, which increases the chances of infertility, of depression, hmm. even of cancers. 
So I've got that in my multivitamin, which is really crucial, and, and I think more and more people are going to start. If you look at the literature, it's, it's inherent in the importance of those things. Um, also, fish oil is really important. I have programs for digestion. I, I do it programmatically. And for thyroid, um, as well as perimenopause and menopause and PMS. So all of those things are programmatic. So you can really just go on the website and kind of look at what your issues might be. And then um, if you really want to order the supplements, you can certainly do that. Got it. So it, it sort of depends on what, what's important. Right, right, what your symptoms are and what you're experiencing. Yeah, it does a little bit. And I'll put um, some kind of I'll put some links uh, in the show notes to some of those resources online because you do have a amazing amazing resources online and really really useful articles and you know there's a, there's an absence of that and it's just very easy you know I'm sort of asking you to do the thing that I don't like to do which is like just give me a blanket like what can I do so I I don't mean to put right. you in that spot well, clearly no, you but know. I mean there are very basically there are herbs that are very helpful for the adrenals you know ashwagandha astragalus Siberian ginseng. Um, cordyceps, rhodiola, all those herbs are very good because what they do is they help the, the adrenals adapt. If the cortisol is too high, it brings it down. If it's too low, it brings it up. Hmm. For those people that are very wired at night and can't sleep, um, there's something called phosphatidylserine or, you know, I use a product called uh, or phosphorylated serine, it works incredibly well to help with sleep as well to get the high cortisol level down. Um, because it's such a problem for so many people because we've been wired for so long and then the adrenals can't adapt at night and they have the reverse. They should be high in the morning and low at night and many people are Mm. low in the morning, exhausted and high at night and they can't sleep. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I want to ask you one final question. So I think it, yeah. it it sounds to me like one of your major recommendations, and I, I, I just from personal experience, I would agree with this, is to wean yourself off of sugar. That was one thing that you said that was like the number one thing you should yeah. consider doing. So talk yeah. about what that looks like, because I don't know what other people's experiences are. I can certainly share mine. But I know yeah. that it's it's kind of hard, and it's not something you could be like yeah. one day just be like I'm not going to do sugar anymore. Well, you can. I'm not going to do sugar anymore, and not expect to experience some symptoms. So, can you talk just a little bit about well, what people can expect? The reality is, if, if I can get people off it and just say, "Look, I need you to stop tomorrow," it will make a difference, but you won't feel so great for three to four days. Some people have more fatigue, they have mood swings, their energy shifts and changes, and they're not very happy people for sure. <laughs> So, uh, putting it mildly, so what I say to people is if you can do it that way, it's best to do it that way, but support the body, you know, make sure that you cut your carbs back at the same time, that you have adequate protein, that you're taking a multivitamin, that we've got your vitamin D, that it's adequate, and that you find some other options for yourself that using stevia, for example, so you're not feeling so, I mean, people have withdrawal, I'm not kidding, they really have withdrawal when they're, when they're doing this. And they feel horrible. And it's just helping them know that I promise you, I promise you on the other side, you're going to feel so damn good you won't believe it. And you're not going to miss it. That's the weird thing is when sugar's out of your system, you're you're like, why did I I ever want that? It's just a strange I know, but it, it changes the biochemistry so much the body starts craving it. So that's part of the puzzle. But it really, really makes a difference. It's incredible, the difference. And what I would really like to say to your audience is that food is the most powerful drug we have. And if you have nothing else to offer yourself, if you change your diet and stop sugar, and for many people it's gluten as well, you will notice a huge difference in how you feel. And it just seems so ridiculous because it's so simple and we have to eat anyway. So if you can just change the combination of what you're doing. And in uh, my book, Is It Me or My Adrenals, I talk a lot about that. And the book is actually has no gluten in it. But each of the meals is about 16 grams of carbs per meal and 7 grams of carbs per snack. And I specifically have each recipe 30 minutes or less because I don't have time to cook sometimes. Oh, that's brilliant. And I wanted to make it easy for moms that have families. So the recipes are pretty yummy as well. So is that like a diet protocol book that you've put together? Well, it's not diet. It's really about the adrenals. It's about, you know, what kind of food plan do I want you on if I do adrenals okay. with you? And um, it's, it's just I made it as easy as I could possibly do it and had it be gluten-free as well. Excellent. And I love that. On carbs and there's no sugar in it. We'll definitely put that a link to that book as well in the show notes. Well, Marcel, this has been absolutely fascinating. It's been an honor to chat with you. Thank you for, by, for providing such amazing resources just online and to my audience today. So thanks for, so much for joining us. Where can people absolutely. find out more about you and about Women to Women? Yep. 
Um, the women to women dot com. You may can sign up for the newsletter there. That's one of the ways. Or if they're interested in doing a phone consult, they can call a clinic, and they'll also have to post to have a lot of blogs on there as well, so they can get more information from me there as well. Excellent, and I will put both of those links in the show notes too. And Great. of course, Great. you can find life hacks for working moms at lh the number four wm dot com. You can also find me on iTunes and Stitcher Smart Radio. I do recommend you subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss an episode. And if you enjoyed the show and all of the great tips from Marcel, please share it with another important woman in your life. Thanks for joining me on this episode. And until next time, be well and remember to be kind to yourself.